Hi there, and good afternoon. I'm John. I'm Zen, and I'm Julie. We're with C Nation, and you are tuned in to the 50 Days of Cannabis podcast, where we examine the cannabis laws in each of the 50 states. Oh, well, hold on, John. You missed one. I did. The District of Columbia is also included in this. We just thought 50 days sounded a little better than 51. Today we're looking at the cannabis laws in Kentucky. The bluegrass state isn't particularly friendly to cannabis aficionados with most of its charges at the felony level. It is, however, among the more lenient states when it comes to assessing financial penalties for cannabis crimes. So, Zen, tell us all about possession in Kentucky. The possession of less than 8 ounces of cannabis is a misdemeanor charge punishable up to 45 days in jail with an associated fine of $250. Possession of any amounts greater than 8 ounces is considered intent to distribute and is handled by Kentucky sales and trafficking laws. Wow. While technically legal in Kentucky, prescription cannabis extracts high in CBD and low in THC are severely restricted. So even if you meet the strict criteria, you still have to find it elsewhere. Right, right. And elsewhere for Kentucky... Several states away. It is. It's not super-duper close for them, so that's a shame. You know, we just saw a report from the World Health Organization. I'm going to say it just came out last week. Could have been the week before. It's very fresh, though. They basically... This was breaking news from the World Health Organization regarding... CBD. They basically told the nations of the world that CBD is not a health threat. It's not psychoactive. It should not be on anybody's drug schedule. It should be made readily available to anyone who wants it for any reason without a prescription. So we'll see what any of the nations around the world do about that. And it's weird. The United States, our federal government, for some reason, doesn't pay a lot of attention to the World Health Organization. And I think it largely has to do with the fact that, you know, they score and assess, you know, all things medical around the world. And when it comes to health care, we're like in the middle. We're, we're not even close to the top yeah. of health care deliverables, the cost of health care, all of these things. I mean, there's, there's nations around the around the world that we might be floored to realize have a better health care system than we do cuba is one of those so that that could have something to do with it but that's it's so crazy that residents in kentucky residents in any state have to jump through so many hoops for freaking cbd and this stuff that's coming from you know, these industrial hemp presses, and you can buy it on the shelves anywhere. It's not the same. It's a little bit of a different variety from the cannabis sativa plant, which is where we get all things cannabis that seems to scare quite a few people in this country. But the CBD that comes from traditional cannabis plants, complete with THC, differs, and it has to do with what's known as the entourage effect. The cannabis sativa plant that produces cannabis with THC in it is full of all sorts of other cannabinoids and all sorts of other terpenes, and they all work together. They work together, that's the entourage effect. One compound follows another compound, follows another compound, and all of a sudden you're really doing whole health medicine, whole plant medicine, because it's all working together. Not all of that is readily present and available in industrial hemp. In fact, I mean, the THC is at 0.3% or lower. The CBD percentages and all of these are so much lower This is the part that really bothers me the most about industrial hemp-derived CBD, is that it takes so much more of the raw industrial hemp product to make the same amount of CBD as it does compared to 
you know, the traditional cannabis sativa plant. So you've got this really great resource in industrial hemp that we know is great for textiles and fabrics and all sorts of materials and clothing and I mean just on and on and on. That's its really excellent use. And it's super efficient in those worlds. Conversely, it's super inefficient when it comes to extracting CBD. So you're taking this plant that some people will claim will change the world, will change the industrial textile world because of its so many applications. And then you're going and just chopping down fields of it for a little bit of CBD extract. For what reason? To jump into the marketplace to make money and for no other reason. I'm not saying the cannabis sativa guys didn't jump into the same market for the same reason, but they're using an awful lot less of their raw material to get their CBD extracts, which do work better, by the way, because of that entourage effect. So, yeah, it just, it just gets me a little annoyed. And Kentucky is a great industrial hemp state. And they have been for a very long time. 20, 25 years ago, when a lot of this cannabis legalization talk wasn't even really on the radar and wasn't part of our daily conversation like it is now, Kentucky was the only state in the nation that could grow hemp. And I always thought that was great on the one hand, and I always thought it was ridiculous on the other hand, because we import hemp products from Canada. And I'm talking like clothing, just products, just consumer products. Really? Why are we doing that? So I always applauded Kentucky for, you know, its legislature legalizing the growth of industrial hemp, really to see what all they could do with it. It's one of the poorest states in the nation, and it gave people a real opportunity to jump into a financial market, potentially, you know, lucrative financial marketplace through a product that they were growing. A lot of farmland, a lot of fields, a lot of places that a lot of people could grow industrial hemp. So anyway, I've gone and gotten off on a tangent. So it's time for me to shut up and it's time for Jules to tell us about them growers and sellers okay. in Kentucky. Let's get into it. All right, let's talk about those grower and sellers. The seller distribution of eight ounces or less of cannabis is a misdemeanor in Kentucky, punishable up to one year in jail and a fine of How much? A fine of five hundred dollars. <laughs> Get busted at a second time at this level, or any amount greater than eight ounces is a felony. Sentences range between one and twenty years in prison, with maximum fines of ten thousand dollars. Yikes! That's just crazy talk crazy so let's talk about the growers the cultivation of less than five cannabis plants on your first offense in kentucky is a misdemeanor punishable up to one year in jail and a fine of five hundred dollars getting caught a second time at this level or cultivating of five or more cannabis plants is a felony punishable between one and ten years in prison with maximum financial penalties of ten thousand dollars Wow. So just don't grow. Just don't sell. Maybe I just claim stupidity and say I thought it was industrial hemp. <laughs> no. trying, I don't think so. I'm just trying <laughs> yeah. to CBD myself up and I can't figure out why I'm so stoned. <laughs> I just keep trying and trying. This <laughs> hemp is just getting me so high. Probably won't work, I guess. <laughs> it's worth a try. I mean, once. You get away with it once, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it gives you the first offense of it now. It's like yeah, the second offense. Sure. We ain't stupid now. <laughs> sure. So, anyway, yeah, that might be something somebody's going to try. I bet somebody has tried that. Yeah. I thought I was growing industrial hemp. Anyway, time for a little bit of seriousness here. And it is serious in Kentucky. It is their school zone law. And it is roughly, you know, I'm going to I'm going to correct myself. We keep saying school zone laws and we know what we mean. And you longtime listeners also know what we mean. But we really want to start calling these drug-free zones because they've branched out to include other logical places like boys and girls clubs, like parks. libraries, parks, places 
where you can reasonably expect to find families congregated, doing family things, doing whatever. So the drug-free zones in Kentucky are pretty serious, and it is within 1,000 yards, so that's 3,000 feet. That is more than half a mile. It is a felony. It's a Class D felony, which is their first entry-level felony, one to five years incarceration, and again, this $10,000 fine. They must figure everybody in Kentucky can come up with ten grand, because yeah. there's not a fine <laughs> larger than ten. Ten must be it. Go to the go to the Kentucky Derby in, <laughs> in in May and place a bet. You could cover your fine. There we go. That's probably how they do it. So that's probably not how they do it at all. But there you go. School zone laws. What do we say, Jules? Be an adult. Be an adult. Absolutely. For a more comprehensive look at the cannabis laws in Kentucky, please visit us at cnation.com and click on the state-by-state -state link. Remember, you have rights if you're arrested for any cannabis-related reasons. You have the constitutional right to remain silent until your attorney is present. If you don't have an attorney, gotta ask for one. Holla! This is Zed. And Julie. And John. With C Nation bringing you a snapshot of the cannabis laws in Kentucky. Be safe. Stay forward! <laughs> yeah. yeah, what they said. <laughs> The 50 Days of Cannabis podcast is a copyrighted production of the South American Gold Corporation. We appreciate your likes and shares on social media. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CNation Channel.